Data, data, data. Data is everywhere these days. Raise your hand if you used uh, Google Maps on your phone to find your way here. Several of you. Well, you just created a bunch of data that Google can make money on. <laughs> How many of you watched anything on Netflix this week? Wow. Did you know that the history of what you watch on Netflix is data worth a lot of money to the company? Patients spending time in the hospital, they generate a lot of data, starting with their electronic health records coming in, and doses of antibiotics, vitals each day, and on and on. To give you one more example, police body camera videos. They are in the news more and more these days, usually because something controversial happens in the encounter. But cops all over the country are generating these videos more and more every day. Indeed, data is considered the oil of the 21st century. Companies are finding newer and newer ways to make money of data. And we are generating loads and loads of data mainly because it has become cheap and easy to do so. To use a cliche, we are in the age of big data. But unlike oil, we often have too much of data and don't know what to do with it all. The challenge is its complexity. I claim that data is a monster not so much because of its size, but because of its complex nature. And this concept is illustrated very nicely by the example of data sorts. <laughs> you have a bunch of points which forms the outline of a dinosaur called data sorts. Given this data set, you can compute statistics, average and standard deviation in the x and y coordinates and maybe correlation and so on. Now, look at this data set. Would you say that this is different from the data source? <laughs> Most of you would say so, I think. But it has the same statistics as the data source, identical. How about this one? Some of you might have guessed it. It has the same statistics as the both pictures that I showed before. In fact, the researchers have come up with a dozen images, none of which look anything like the data source. But all 13 of them have exactly the same statistics. So the lesson to be learned here is that you need to visualize data. You need to look at your data to see its structure and shape, and not just rely on statistics. How do you look at data in high dimensions? If I claim that I can see beyond 3D, I'll be called a crazy lunatic. But this is where topology, a branch of pure mathematics, can help. Till about a couple of decades back, topology was taught only to PhD students in universities. Topologists used to be, and some still are, quite the math nerds. <laughs> but today, Topology forms the foundation of a new branch of data analysis called topological data analysis, or TDA. TDA produces insightful visualizations from large and complex data sets, which uh, reveals hidden patterns in data, which could lead to discoveries that could radically change the way you live. I want to tell you three stories of TDA helping to see the invisible in data from three different areas. The first story is about type 2 diabetes. According to the American Diabetes Association, there are more than 32 million Americans with diabetes. That's one in only 10 of us. So the need to understand the mechanisms underlying diabetes could not be emphasized too much. Researchers from Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York used TDA to look at data from over 11,000 patients. So the data included electronic health records, genetic information, and a whole other diverse suite of variables. And the picture that they got was on the cover of Science Magazine in 2015. It shows the type 2 diabetes patients clearly separating into three subgroups. And the researchers were able to go into the data and confirm that there were indeed three subtypes of type 2 diabetes. In particular, they were able to find genetic markers unique to each subtype. So doctors could use this information to tailor treatments for each subtype. Now, many of you would have heard about artificial intelligence and machine learning, which is quite the rage these days, and might wonder, wouldn't machine learning identify these subtypes? 
It is in this context that we see the true merit of what TDA has achieved. The researchers did not know going into their analysis that there were three subtypes. In fact, they did not even know that there were subtypes. The discovery was made in an unsupervised fashion. No learning was involved. They just used TDA to look at the data in the right fashion and outpot this picture which revealed the three subtypes. For the second story, I want to talk about police body camera videos. Policing is a stressful job. Body camera videos are in the news more and more these days, often because something controversial happens in the encounter. And public opinion is often influenced extremely by such isolated videos. But most cops have cameras on whenever they are on duty. So the number of videos generated by officers all over the country every day is huge. How do you make sense of all this data? I work with criminologists on studying body camera videos and the associated data. We looked at around 300 videos for which we knew several pieces of data, including race and gender of the officer and the suspect. How much force was used by the officer? Was it day or night? Was aggression shown by the officer or the suspect? And a few other variables. Mind you, this is only 300 videos, so it's not a huge data set. But it is complex. So we used TDA to look at the data, and we got this picture. So in this picture, as we go from left to right, more force is used by the officer. The red pies represent the white suspects. Blue pies and green pies represent minority and black suspects. And one can see that as we go from left to right, the sizes of the blue and green pies, minority and black suspects, appear to become larger. That's when more force is being used. But the overall picture is more complicated. In particular, we saw that there is two different kinds of encounters when low force is used. Also, we found that the gender of the suspect and the time of the encounter, day or night, also complicated the picture. Once again, we did not have any preconceived notions going into this data analysis. We just used TDA to look at the data. And the picture we got seemed to suggest that the race of the suspect is an important factor in the uses of force by the officers. But this relationship may be quite nuanced. Again, the take home message here is that you should not jump to conclusions based on isolated incidents that make the news. Our TDA analysis suggests the need for more comprehensive study of body camera videos. Whew. For the third story, I want to talk about something more light, watching movies on Netflix. <laughs> as soon as you finish watching a movie, you are given recommendations for other movies that you might like. Now think about this scenario. Your friend just watched the movie Mulan an animated musical adventure movie. But you just enjoyed the movie Moulin Rouge, a musical romantic drama film. Okay? And you want to suggest a sequence of movies to your friend, which will ease them from one genre to the other so that they enjoy along the way and end up loving to watch Moulin Rouge. How do you find such a sequence? Netflix will not give that sequence to you. So my student and I looked at a public database of over 20 million movie ratings by around 140,000 users. That is a large data set. We used TDA to look at it. We got pretty pictures similar to the diabetes case and the body camera videos case. But we looked at it more. And we were able to come up with a sequence of movies to suggest to your friend. If they have only limited time, we suggest the short recommendation of four movies shown on the left. So Dumbo, Sound of Music, and uh, Mula Rouge. But a more meaningful, albeit longer, sequence of movies is shown on the right. The transitions there are more gentle and more meaningful, and hence your friend would be eased into watching Mula Rouge. <laughs> so I hope I have convinced you that mathematics shows up in your daily life in unexpected ways. Mathematics, and in particular topology, helps you to see the invisible in data 
which can lead to more effective treatments, maybe more meaningful ways to train your officers, better movie recommendations, and much more. It's time we embrace mathematics. The next time you are watching something on Netflix or just finding your way around town with your phone, think about how math may be enabling all that cool stuff. Keep your mind open to new uses of data and of mathematics. Thank you very much for listening.